Hi everyone, in this series we'll be looking at procedurally generating some simple but fairly diverse planets. These planets are mainly intended to be viewed from afar, as a level of detail system will not be implemented in this series. The first task is to create a sphere, but not all spheres are created equal. This one, for example, is made up of triangles which get smaller and smaller towards the poles, which means we get a rather uneven distribution of detail in our planet. A sphere like this is much nicer because all the triangles are roughly the same, however each time we increase the detail, the number of triangles increases fourfold, which doesn't give us as much control as we'd probably like. Instead, we're actually going to start with six separate planes, making up a cube. We'll then essentially inflate this to get our sphere. As you can see, the triangles are all more or less the same size, and we also have quite fine control over the number of triangles. As a further benefit, if you want to add a level of detail system, it's a lot easier to do with this approach because you can divide the faces of the underlying cube into smaller chunks. There is a drawback to this method though, which is that the surface normals won't match up along the seams, resulting in a visible seam when lit, and so we'll have to do a bunch of extra work to patch those up. Okay, so let's start by creating a script called planet, and another script which I'm going to call terrain face, and the idea is that the planet script will be responsible for creating six terrain faces and telling each of them which direction they're facing, and then each terrain face will then construct its own mesh. So going into the terrain face script, this isn't going to inherit from mono behavior, and each terrain face is going to want to have its own mesh. It'll also need to know how detailed it needs to be, so I'll call it the resolution, and I want to know which way it's facing, so I'll call that the local up. Then we can generate a constructor to set all of those. And now, if we imagine we've got this face and it has a local up direction, we're going to want to uh, calculate these other two directions, which I'll call axis A and axis B. So let me write these here, vector three, axis A, and axis B. So we can say axis A is equal to a new vector 3, and we can just swap around the coordinates of uh, the local up we've been given. So for example, I can swap the y with the x, and the z with the y, and the x with the z, like so. Then for axis B, we want to find a vector which is perpendicular to both local up and axis A, so we do that using the cross product of local up and axis A. All right, I'm now going to create a public method called construct mesh, and this is going to have an array of vector threes to hold the vertices, so set that equal to a new array of vector threes, and the resolution is going to be the number of vertices along a single edge of the face, so the total number of vertices will be resolution squared. Then we'll also need an interray to hold the indices of all of the triangles. So we're going to need to figure out how many triangles there'll be in our mesh. So imagine these dots as the vertices of our mesh. Uh, so we can say that this has got a resolution of 4. Then the number of these little faces is the resolution minus 1 squared. And each of these little faces is made up of two triangles. So we multiply that by 2 and each triangle is made up of three vertices, so we multiply this by three. So we can now set this equal to a new integer array with a size of resolution minus one multiplied by resolution minus one multiplied by two multiplied by three, or just multiply by six. All right, I am now going to have a for loop for int y equals naught, y less than the resolution, and another nested for loop for int x equals naught, x less than resolution as well. And in here I'm going to create a vector2 percent equal to new vector2 x comma y divided by resolution minus 1. So uh, for example, when x is equal to 0, the percent on the x-axis will be equal to 0 as well, and when x has reached its highest value of resolution minus 1, then the percent will be equal to 1 on the x-axis. So this is essentially telling us how close to complete each of these loops is. 
So we can use this to define where the vertex should be along the face. So I'll create vector three point on unit cube is equal to, and now let's imagine the top face of our unit cube here. So if the center of our cube was at zero, zero, zero in the world, then this corner here would be negative one, one, negative one, and this corner here would be one, one, one. So to get our point on this face, we're going to want to move one unit along the local up axis, and then we're going to want a value between negative one and positive one, telling us how far along axis A we are, and another value between negative one and positive one, telling us how far along axis B we are. So let's start by moving one unit along the local up axis, and then for our value between negative one and positive one, we can have percent dot x minus a half multiplied by two, and then we can multiply that by axis A, and we can do the same thing for axis B, so percent dot y minus a half multiplied by two multiplied by axis B. Now, I'd like to add this point to the vertices array, but in order to do that, we need to calculate the index. So uh, let me create an int i over here. So this will be equal to the number of iterations of the inner loop, so that's x, plus the number of iterations of the outer loop, which is y. But remember, for each iteration of the outer loop, we're doing an entire row of vertices. So we'll multiply that by the resolution. Okay, so we can now say vertices with an index of i is equal to point on unit cube. Just in case you're confused by this line, this is the same thing as just writing int i equals zero up here, and then incrementing i by one each time we do a loop. All right, let's now create our triangles. Okay, so if we're at vertex zero, so our index i is of course equal to zero, then we're going to want to create these two triangles. Now, we want to define them in a clockwise order, just so that the mesh faces the correct way. So the first triangle could be, for example, zero, five, four, and the second perhaps zero, one, five. More generally, if we're starting at vertex i, then the next vertex in the first triangle would be i, plus the number of vertices per line, which we're calling the resolution, plus one, and then the next one would be i plus the resolution. For the second triangle, it would be i, followed by i plus one, followed by i plus resolution plus one. Note, by the way, that we'll be adding these two triangles for each of the vertices, except for the ones along the right and bottom edge, since, of course, for those, the two triangles would be outside of the mesh. All right, so outside of the loop, I'm going to create an int try index, which starts at zero. Then inside the loop here, we can create the triangles so long as the current vertex is not along the right or bottom edge, which is to say x is not equal to resolution minus one, and nor is y equal to resolution minus one. So now to actually define the triangle, we can say triangles with an index of try index is equal to i, so that's the first vertex. Then I'll copy this twice. So the second vertex of the first triangle will be try index plus one, and this is equal, as we saw, to i plus resolution plus one. And then the next will be i plus resolution. So that's the first triangle. Then we need to do the second triangle. So let me update these indices here. This will be try index plus three, try index plus four, and try index plus five. And we go i to i plus one, to i plus resolution plus one. And then we've added six vertices. So we want to increase try index by six. So now to actually assign this data to the mesh, let's say mesh.vertices is equal to vertices, mesh.triangles is equal to triangles, and let's also recalculate the normals. 
Now, one thing we need to be careful of is if we're updating the mesh with a lower resolution version, then when we assign the vertices here, it's going to see that the triangles that were existing from our previous higher resolution mesh suddenly are referencing indices that don't exist anymore, and we're going to get an error. So best to first just clear all the data from the mesh. Okay, let's save that. And I'm now going to open up the planet script. In here, we're going to want to create six mesh filters for displaying our terrain faces. So I'll create a mesh filter array, call that mesh filters. And then I'm going to have a method called something like initialize. And in here, I'll say mesh filters is equal to a new array of mesh filters with a size of six. And then I'll have a for loop to loop over all of these. And then in here, we can create a new game object. I'll just call this mesh object. Set that equal to new game object. Just call it mesh. And just to keep the hierarchy nice and organized, let's parent this to the current transform. And then we're going to want to add a mesh renderer. So we can say mesh object dot add component mesh renderer. And we'll then say mesh filters i is equal to mesh object dot add component of type mesh filter. We'll want to assign that mesh filter some mesh. So I'll just say mesh filters i dot shared mesh is equal to a new mesh. Okay, we should probably also just give this some default material for now. So uh, when we add the mesh render component, I'll just say that the shared material is equal to a new material and let's go shader.find the standard shader. All right, now that we've got our mesh filters, we're seeing to want an array of terrain faces. So create a variable for that as well and assign that up here. Terrain faces, we'll say a new terrain face array, also with a size of six. And we can set terrain faces with an index of i equal to a new terrain face. And we pass in a mesh, a resolution, and a local up. So for the mesh, let's go mesh filters with an index of i dot shared mesh. For the resolution, let's create a public int resolution up here. And give us a default value of 10. And maybe make this in a range from 2 to 256, just because 256 squared is about the maximum amount of vertices a mesh can have. Uh, so we pass resolution into here, and then local up, where we want to go through all the different uh, sort of cardinal directions. So let's create an array of those over here. Vector 3 array directions is equal to and we can just go through these all, vector3.up, vector3.down, left, right, uh, forward, and back. Okay, so we pass in directions with an index of i over there. Okay, now I'm going to have another method here called generate mesh. And in here, I'm just going to loop through all of the terrain faces. So for each uh, terrain face in the terrain faces array, we can call face dot construct mesh. Now I'd like this to work in the editor whenever we update anything. So I'll just use the on validate method here. And each time this is called, I'll first initialize things and then generate the mesh. Now we don't actually want to create a new set of six mesh filters each time that this gets initialized. So what I'll do is say we only uh, reinitialize the mesh filters if the array is currently null or if it has no elements. So if the length is equal to zero, like so. And in this loop, we'll only create a new mesh object if mesh filters i is equal to null. Now, in order for these mesh filters to be saved uh, in the editor, we're going to want this uh, field here to be serialized. So I'll add a serialize field attribute, but I don't want it to show up in the inspector, so I'll also just add the hide in inspector attribute. 
All right, so I'm going to save that and go into Unity. And I'll create a new empty object in the scene here, call this planet. And I'll add the planet script to that. And as soon as I do, you can see we have this cube popping up here. And then we just go into shaded wireframes so that we can uh, see the actual triangles on this. So as we change the resolution here, we should see that being updated very nicely. Okay, so now in order to make this into a sphere, we want all of these vertices to be the same distance away from the center. So the easiest way to do this is just to go uh, into the terrain face, and here we'll create vector3 point on unit sphere is equal to point on unit cube dot normalized. Now, there is actually a better way of doing this, which will give us a more even distribution of points, but for now this is perfectly fine. So we'll just uh, assign the point on unit sphere to the vertices array instead, save that, and head back to Unity. And now as soon as this finishes compiling, we'll see that we have a sphere instead of a cube. Now, as mentioned at the start of the video, uh, we do have these noticeable seams between the pieces uh, due to the normals not being consistent across the edges, which gives us funny lighting, but that is something that will be addressed later on in the series. Uh, that is going to be it for now, so until next episode, cheers!